As long as I can remember, I've had some sort of relationship with Jesus. I went to church when I was little, Sunday school, vacation Bible school. I got baptized around eight. I remember it vividly. I remember the, saying the words, Jesus, please come live in my heart. And I remember what it meant to me at that moment. I remember being a teenager and sharing the love of Jesus with others in Gar Springs. I remember all of my mistakes as a young adult. I grew up, had my share of mistakes and problems, and I met a guy, had a whirlwind courtship, and I married quickly. I was eight months pregnant, and the only reason I married him was I was in love, sure, but more than anything, I was convinced that if I had a child out of wedlock, that was a sin that I couldn't be forgiven for. Now, being older and wiser, I know just how wrong I was. I married a very abusive man, and I was in a horrible marriage before I knew it. We had four children, and after much trial and error, numerous times of leaving and returning, God used the best possible tool to reach me, the Bible. I had had enough of the abuse, and I was given the opportunity to get out, and I had begun reading the Bible. I was searching for some answers in my life. I was searching for direction, among some other things, and it was suggested that I read Proverbs. With it being a lot of do's and don'ts, it seemed like the best place for me to start. I read each and every one of them with deep thought. And then I read Proverbs 19:19, 19, 19, which says, an angry man must pay the penalty. If you rescue him, you will do it again. It honestly felt like as if the hand of God had come through the pages of the Bible and smacked me in the face. I had been searching for answers. I had been praying and prayed to know what I was doing was right. That leaving him, that divorcing him, it was really the right thing to do. And there it was, literally staring me in the face. With this, I was able to get out of a very abusive marriage and eventually use everything I had been to through to try to help others. I was then blessed enough to have the opportunity to become a domestic violence advocate. I also had the opportunity to become a police officer. I was lucky enough to be picked to share my story in Ladies Home Journal. I was, in, <clears throat> I was invited to appear on the Trisha Goddard show and I ended, it even ended up in a college text. These are the pictures of the magazine article. This was me in 2002, the worst it ever got. I was told by the doctor there was no medical reason that I was alive, let alone I was standing and talking. Well, God wasn't done with me yet. The other picture was in 2010. Next, just to show you what you see in pictures, or on the outside is the never full, the full story. I was blessed enough to serve with the Governor's Domestic Violence Task Force and I helped get many laws passed in our state. I had accepted life as a single mom and I was just concentrating on raising my boys. And as always, just because that was my plan didn't mean it was Jesus' plan. Because then at God's perfect timing, for me and for him in more ways than one, my husband found me. He was my junior high school sweetheart, truly the love of my life. We were blessed enough to become married, and then shortly after I became married, we had four, one, we, I was, became pregnant with our son, Taylor, pardon me. He was born in 2011. Life couldn't get any better. We had four perfect, wonderful boys. And then in March 14th, 2012, Taylor passed away of SIDS. I've been through a lot in my life, but this, Losing your son cannot be put into words. The grief of losing your child doesn't ever end. It just gets different and it changes. My job as Taylor's mom now became keeping Taylor's memory alive. So we do random act of kindness in his memory. We also do something big and something different every year in his name. About two years after we lost Taylor, I became pregnant again with our daughter, Arabelle, who was born in 2014. And then in 2015, we became grandparents to our wonderful grandson, Aldo. We are active in the church, and we try to be active in our community. The one word that I would use to explain me or my life now is grateful. I'm grateful every minute of every day to be alive. I'm grateful I get to be married to my best friend. I'm grateful for every one of my children and every second with each and every one of them. I'm grateful 
for each and every second that I had with Taylor in this world. And I'm eternally grateful to know that he's safe in heaven with our creator and I will see him again. I'm grateful for each and every one of you that are here, that are listening or that are watching. And I'm also grateful that I'm blessed enough to be able to stand here tonight and share God's story with you and the small world that I've played in it. Uh, there's two things I wanna mention. October's Domestic Violence Awareness Month. Um, and it's also SIDS Awareness Month. So we couldn't start out the month with a better speaker. Thank y'all so much. I hope you enjoyed it.